In this episode, we're going to continue working on the arc and today I'll be looking into the arrangement of the pots basically do some staging. The purpose of this is I want to figure out what the main features would be so I have to set the, the points of interest So far I have my pots and bowls on the ground I would need to rearrange them and based on my sketch I was thinking of doing a tapestry in between the bowls this means I need to reserve some space around them and I might end up having to reduce the number of bowls and pots in this design because otherwise as you can see right now there's a little space in between it might be too crowded but before we get to that we'll need to do some staging Here's what I had in mind so far. So I have three main points of interest. So this large pot here, the bowls here, and three more pots here. I'll be planting them, I'll be setting them at different heights, which means that that, that large bowl over there would be sitting much higher, while the two smaller bowls around it would be set a bit lower. This pots would be above ground, maybe not too high, I guess. And this one will be def definitely above ground. After rearranging them, you would see that there's a bit of space in between. So I'll be creating a tapestry flowing from here and going around here. It would be a slightly U-shaped, I guess. Although I'm, th I'm still thinking whether I should move this pot a bit further out so there would be space to go around it this way maybe that's what I would want to do As you can see, I've just marked out the area I'm doing my tapestry in. It would be a strip going around this spot, then turning a bit, bending here, and, and terminating behind these three pots over here. Now that I've got a rough idea of where the pots and bowls would be, I would need to start thinking about the plants. I have seven pots and bowls on the ground right now. I would also need to find seven suitable plants. So seven pots and I need seven plant candidates. One of the candidates I had in mind is this Zorro. I got this as a cutting from one of my neighbors. It's impressive in size, it's quite big, and I think it would make a good specimen in the arc. Candidate number two, this is a uh, an Echeveria Fire and Ice. It's a large frilly type, so I would like it to go there as well. The next candidate is this Echeveria Double Delight. It's known in Australia as Echeveria Moon Goddess. Another choice would be this Echeveria Princess Anne. It's green right now, but it usually goes orange and pink when it's more stressed. Surely will be more stressed once it goes out into the sun again. Another specimen I would want to move out would be this Echeveria Blue Waves. It has nice frills, very compact leaves. It provides a nice accent to the design. I have a couple of Caprice here. 
I might go with one of them. Maybe the larger one. This one. There's two more here that I want to use. This is an Echeveria Golden Glow. I'm not sure what this one is. I just picked this up in the markets and it has no name. I also want to showcase this morning light. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe for a bit of color, I could also include this Mary Butterfield. I'm also considering using this Fulgens because it looks nice. So here are the candidates. I ended up getting more plants than I need. So as you can see, I've got seven bowls and pots but down here I've got 11 plants I would need to eliminate some of them so I'll be thinking about this next I'll definitely want to keep this Zorro because this is special and it's large I'm probably putting this in the large bowl over here The Princess Anne is huge, so I'll probably put it in the tall pot over here. I'm not sure if it will fit, but let's see. No, maybe I'll just lay it outside for now. This golden glow is pretty, but I already have a golden glow in another landscape. so. You're out. This fire and ice is also going out for the same reason. I've got it in another landscape. I would like to show off my morning light, so it's staying. I haven't thought about where it's going, but probably one of these pots here. I'm doing the same for the blue waves. It's going into one of the smaller pots. There's one more small pot left and between the two, I think this is more photogenic. So I'll take the Mary Butterfield and just leave it here for now. So I've got two medium sized bowls left. I'll see what else I can put in there. So these four are left. And I think I'll be using the two larger ones in those two bowls. So these two are out. So I have decided on my foundation plants. I think we're ready for the next step. So the next step involves actually setting the pots in the ground. So I need to get them in the right elevation. Basically I have to get them to look the way that I want them to look in the final product. They are already more or less in the positions I want them in, but I just need to either bury them or elevate them according to, according to the design. But before I work on it, and since it is summer, I get the plants out of the way for now, put them in shade, that way they don't burn in the summer sun. It's another day and I'm continuing work on the ark. So this is where we left off from last time. I have the bowls staged on the ground so far, but I haven't worked on burying them yet.
I like how they are laid so far but looking at the center there seems to be a huge gap here a huge empty space and I I feel like adding something here I'm not sure if I want to add more pots here because doing that then it would be more crowded maybe I could just try putting some in and just see and get a feel of it because maybe that might help me decide The idea seemed fine at first, but as I was working on it, I realized that it was getting quite crowded at the back. And compared to how the others are laid out, this small clump is so dense, so it doesn't work with the overall harmony of the rest of the design. So maybe I'll have to scrap this idea and use fewer pots. I'm having a hard time thinking of a suitable design and maybe just leaving it like this is good after all. I'll probably just work on a tapestry here or plant some of the larger larger cultivars as long as I don't turn it into another arc, an arc within an arc, so meta. So now that I've decided on the layout, I need to do some plant staging which means that I'll be leaving the plants here. But since this is an exposed area, I would need to add, a sh add some shade cloth above them. But first, I'll have to. But first, I'll have to repair some of the the beams because they are tilted. So I'll hammer them in again, hammer them deeper.
now that the shade is in, I can put in the plants now and leave them there. I could finalize the plant selection here. Having the shade there just means pretty much that I could leave the plants here. I won't have to worry about moving them out again at the end of the day. And at least I have another area which, which is covered by the shade so I could also uh, place other plants here to seek refuge. Now I'm done staging the plants and I've temporarily put the pots inside the bowls. This helps me visualize how they would look like once I set them in. As for my plant selection, they are mostly frillies. So that's, that's one theme here. As for the colors, right now they are looking a bit pale because it's summer. But once it gets colder, you would, you would see a variety of colors here. So this one at the edge, this is called the blue waves. It turns more purple and purple and blue once it gets colder. This is a morning light. It's more or less going to stay the same color but only more vibrant so it gets more pink. This is a Mary Butterfield and I think it would stay the same color only more vibrant as well so maybe more red. I have no idea what this one is. I just saw this in the market and I, I rescued it. I think I'll still have to wait for it to flower before I can identify it. But whatever it is, I like how it's going large now. So it's staying here. This is the Zorro cutting that I got from my neighbor. So it's going into the largest bowl because Zorros can grow quite big. So during the colder months, the the Zorro goes deep maroon or brown and sometimes much like the the Aeoniums that you see at the back. So this would make good contrast against the other plants here. This is an Echeveria Double Delight. I'm not sure what its maximum size is when it gets mature. Last winter it was more orangish, orange yellow maybe a bit of red at the tips so it's got warm colors to it it will blend nicely the three of them would blend nicely together because they are warm colored and finally on this edge this is a Necheveria Princess Anne it can go it can grow quite tall and large as well it is also freely and last winter it was purely orange very bright orange almost neon like so it would it would also work well with the rest of the plants here so pretty much all of them save for the blue waves here they are all warm they're all warm colored which means that for my fillers I might need to use some of the warmer use so much like the arc in the opposite side I might be using some of these uh, dwarf blue chalk sticks. These are the Senec Senecio serpents. I might also use some elegance because they they make good transition from the blues. This is the elegance is paler, somewhere between blue and green. An alternative is to use the Glocka. So these are the blue ones here, and if you compare them against the the elegance right here, they are more blue. They have a more bluish appearance. I have a preference for the elegance because they look really nice as a ball, you know, they make good clusters. While the Glocka, they have thinner leaves and they shed more often, so they get more messy. But I'll show you another section that I have filled up with Glocka and they filled, filled it up really nice, so this might change my mind. 
I have this clump of Gloca in the front and they have completely filled up the small space that I gave them. You could see how they are pushing against each other. And right next is a, it's a regular chalk sticks. So this is the Senecio Mandraliske. It is much taller than the, the dwarf chalk sticks. And you could see the transition in colors. This is only just slightly more blue than this one. This has a more greenish tinge. So the transition between the two would be subtle. In terms of heights, I'm happy with these three pots here as well as this one here. But I think those three bowls are a bit too low. So maybe I could just elevate them a bit more. Zaki, what do you think? Bow? Bow? <laughs> my staging and I've backfilled uh, the arc with the necessary amount of soil so I can mount them properly and the next steps from here would be more about detail work I'll be finally adding some soil into the pots and plant them properly and once that's done I'll have to start thinking about the design of the tapestry in the bare area around it so this is another episode in the arc arc and I've been mainly working on staging if you enjoyed this episode, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. You could also follow me at my socials at Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. In a future episode, I would be starting work on the tapestry. So over the next few weeks, I would be working on gathering the necessary plant material. And so far, as I've been mentioning earlier, I've been thinking about the, the fillers. But I need to think about the, the lining because the, I would be doing some patterns. So far, I have clumps of Elegance Gloca and uh, Dwarf Chalk Sticks. I think they would work, but we'll see what else I have to work with. There might be some other plant material that I could pick around in the garden. I'll see you in the next episode.